Welcome to the Arrestor Mimics Podcast with your host Ben Talon. Hello and welcome to Arrest All Mimics. I am Ben Talon, your host, and this is the Illustration Limited Podcast celebrating original thinking and creative innovation. This thing's going good, it's getting good. Uh, we've had some really cool support, really good feedback on Rob O'Connor's episode, which was probably one of the more predictable sort of influxes of good feedback when we're talking about a guy who's worked on the projects that Rob and Styler Rouge have. So go back and check that out if you've not yet heard it. Spread the word, tell everyone what we're doing and get those suggestions in at Arrest or Mimics on the Twitter and hit us up arrest on the mix at gmail.com it's been a lot of fun doing this so far and being in london now it's kind of been a great excuse just to go running around the city a lot of days with a notebook and drinking beer and drinking coffee and meeting all these cool people which is on a professional level the, the reason that i moved to this city and it's really starting to to pay off now uh we've got some co- super cool guests coming up um not to mention today's guest um Kyla Paolucci is a graphic designer slash artist slash lettering designer and everything else. She does loads of cool stuff and I met Kyla at World Wrestling Entertainment when I was working for the company. Kyla was a graphic designer there. She since left the company, sadly, when the magazine finished, but from the experience she's picked up there, she's gone on to do some amazing work with companies such as HBO and she has recently worked on the film with Ben Stiller and Naomi Watts, um, While We're Young, which, if you've not seen it, go and check out that film. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's kind of a heartwarming... Uh, what's the right term? It's a comedy. It's a comedy film, and Ben Stiller and Naomi Watts play like a middle-aged couple dealing with middle-aged things, and they meet this young hipster couple, and kind of revert back and start hanging out with these guys and you know abandoning technology and doing all these things to be sort of cool but it's a very funny film and Kyla got a gig working in production design department on the film producing some really cool t-shirt designs set design and her lettering style and illustration and I remember her telling me about this and I thought oh god I've got to get her on the show so I was over in New York recently uh, to check out WWE SummerSlam and I met Kyla before and we uh, we had a conversation up in Brooklyn and I'm going to bring that to you today um, and I can't wait to hear what you think about this. Kyla comes from uh, an Italian-American background and some of the stories about the characters in her family are fantastic. Um, We're going to talk about the sort of New York attitude to fashion and how those guys are a little more uh, openly complimentary than we are here in Britain a lot of the time and we're going to talk about her interest in a real broad sort of divide she's sort of influenced by as she describes it in the show um the kind of angsty 15 year old teenage kind of illustrative style which you can probably check out more on her instagram than you can on her website um it's in the illustration section on the website but if you go and check out on her instagram handle at ciao lucci c-i-a-o-l-u-c-c-i uh, and you'll see some fantastic animated GIFs and illustrated letter in there, and they're absolutely hilarious, and it smacks of Kyla's personality if you ever meet her. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the battle that we all have between producing that kind of personal work, which which strikes a chord in the heart, and the commercial work that we all need to do to a degree to keep paying the bills. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that teenage aesthetic combined with her love of as she describes them as geriatric stylists. And I'm talking about legends like Aries Apfel and Bru- uh, Bill Cunningham. And we're going to talk about all that and, and why she's fascinated with that and how that stems from these kind of rich characters. She has grandparents growing up, these Larry, Larry people. And it's a very, very uh, endearing conversation that gets Kyla across really well. So I'm looking forward to all your thoughts. Like I say, on the Twitter, as ever, at Arrest Omnix. Get this thing shared around, get us downloaded. Keep it coming. Guest suggestions, ideas for the show, as ever. We want to hear from you guys. So I'm here with Kyla Paolucci in what part of Brooklyn are we in? Cobble Hill. Cobble Hill. Cobble Hill. That's cool. I'm just learning Brooklyn. And it's, um, I'm off to SummerSlam this afternoon and I met Kyla at WWE. And you were, what was your job title? I, I was working for a junior designer and then I was a senior designer afterwards after producing an app for them. Yeah. And how long did you work there? I was there for two and a half years until the magazine closed. Yeah. So 
Yeah. And it was, what was it, primarily page layout or apps? I, and yeah, I did page layout. I did WWE Kids Magazine. I did the layouts for that. And I produced the monthly app based off of the monthly magazine that I produced Yeah. for mobile and tablet. Yeah. It's a lot. And what about before that? Like, What's, what's your background? You studied at Rhode Island, right? Yeah, Rhode Island School of Design. I studied graphic design. Um, I always did illustration on the side and got in trouble a lot in graphic design class for doing more illustration than graphic design. <laughs> I did the same. I tried to draw all the typefaces and they were like, oh, you can't, you don't, you're not getting it. You can't do that. Yeah, this is a learning about kerning and I know, oh, I just want to like, draw the outlines. Yeah, I would draw the typeface and they'd be like, how about you just set the type? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's cool, isn't it? Because it's like, it's like, it, it is about what you... It's what, what you're drawn to, isn't it? It's what you want to kind of, what you want to do naturally, surely, and it's that's the stuff you should pursue, I think. Yeah, it's, and I think WWE was like the right thing to do after school because, because I had like this kind of like punky aesthetic. I wanted to do work for like a 15 year old demographic and wrestling kind of like embodied that in all ages, <laughs> so <laughs> it was, it was perfect. Yeah, and you what? You you were a fan at the time, or when I was younger, I had an older brother, so I wanted to be as cool as he was. So watching wrestling was the way to do it. <laughs> Undertaker specifically. <laughs> and you just been, you've just been designing on the second. Yeah, magazine, I'm working right? on an Undertaker magazine. Wow. I, I had um, I had a full wall mural that my mum did, like six foot high, head and shoulders. Undertaker in my bedroom as a kid. So like, do you remember that? I do. I've got my brother here in the background as well because he's off to SummerSlam with me. Um, <laughs> and with the people who moved in kept it. Yes, yeah, the people who moved in the flat, uh, the house even after we did, they were they were goths. People still say goth. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> and they, they anyway, they're big metal fans, big metal heads, and they absolutely loved it and said, "Look, keep it, like, just leave it alone." And my mum was like, "Brilliant, that's that's the decorating." <laughs> I would totally have an Undertaker mural, but my roommate would kill me. It would be so great. <laughs> so were you, um, were you a creative kid? Have you sort of always been naturally creative? Is it in the family? Yes. Um, yeah, my grandfather was a pretty like crazy dude. He like walked around town like dressed as an American Indian, like custodian suit, and he made these amazing like wood pieces in his yard and would just display them. They were like big political messages and people called him the Italian Indian because he like kind of, he, he looked like uh, Willie Nelson. Yeah. Except like an Ita old Italian guy. So he was crazy. My dad did carpentry work when I was growing up and like a lot of furniture making. My mom was always really creative and then I just drew on everything I did a lot. I was like really like good at the computer when I was super young. Yeah. Really young. Like as soon as we got it, I figured it out. So I was making a lot of computer art on MS Paint, and I would draw all over my body often. Yeah. And cut my hair in strange ways <laughs> like before I was ten. And how, how did your parents respond to that? Did they tell you off, or did they kind of? this way my dad loved it my mom hated it because <laughs> i think that's important it's like when you do these things and it's like if you get absolutely lambasted for it you, you're probably not going to do it again well you may you might but you'd be less inclined but i think that's funny that one parent would love it and <laughs> i think my mom just wanted me to like be ladylike and but they she definitely liked that i was more creative than my brother and at you know yeah. towards the now especially but I think when I was younger I just gave her a lot of headaches because I was just a weird kid and I think like most creative people are so I'd run around stores and like be very curious about like Barbie displays and like knock down the entire display and like, really? cause her headaches <laughs> doctors off like doctor's appointments like we'd go to doctor's appointments and I would be covered in marker like all over my body <laughs> and she wouldn't know until I had to like get undressed through the doctor. Wow. Is that's brilliant. And really then, like scrub myself before the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it did you kinda of know that you would did you do it on purpose? I mean yeah, she I think her at that point when I was doing that, she's like, You're too old for this now. She's like, You're twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. So yeah, I knew I was doing it to kind of like instigate and not really, I just knew she would get angry. Yeah. I was ready yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my god, I love that. And so, okay, so one of the main things I wanted to talk to you about was you work on um, While We're Young. For anyone that's not familiar, um, it's a recent film with Ben Stiller, Naomi Watts, mm-hmm. and Adam Driver, yes, and Amanda right. Seyfried. Yes, that's right. And so, how did that happen? Because you is that was it after WWE or during? Or that it you... was during WWE. So I do a lot of hand lettering. That's been my main focus lately too, for my personal art. And I had a friend from school get in touch with me saying that he knew a production designer that needed someone like me. So I prepared a portfolio, gave it to um, this guy, Adam Stockhausen, who's a really successful production designer. And he messaged me and said, hey, like, help me out with this film. So he gave me a few projects, which were to design t-shirts in my own handwriting and my own style. So, like, I didn't really have to, like, change my aesthetic to fit the job at all it was like the complete opposite of that i just had to like produce and they would use it um and i did an ice cream label that was a story like a story-based prop that was actually quite important in the film yeah it's key isn't it so yeah it's part of the plot like the turning point of the main character realizes like he's kind of been screwed by this young couple in a way but so his own perception of everything um so yeah and i did Avocado, avocado ice cream yeah that was great because they're <laughs> yeah. like oh so like i guess the premise of what i did was for one of the characters in the film who's this like stereotypical brooklyn hipster who is abandoning like new technology and does everything by hand so yeah all of the designs that he does are very like analog versus everything that this new hip couple are yeah. trying to embrace that are, that's in the digital age yeah, it's like it's, it's um I was watching it on the plane over here actually doing my homework and um it's there's a few really cool like, funny lines in there and one of them is when he's uh they all try to find out the answer to a quiz question and he's like, Let's just not know and it's just like it's like a it's like a painfully awkward moment because like, you can see Google them grow. it. You can see sort of Ben Stiller's character thinking like how you know this guy's so cool but yeah, like, this guy's twice so cool, his age. he doesn't want to Google it. It's like I think there's a lot of is it is it age issues? I think it's about like being comfortable where you are in life. Absolutely. I think that's the underlying themes in the film. And um, so, what? So your t-shirt designs kind of represent that, didn't they? It's like, what, what were the slogans on the t-shirts again? Uh, one of them was some college I didn't go to. Another yeah. one was I've been to a lot of hard rock cafes, kind of using like the hard rock logo. Um, another one was a handgun tucked into like silk screen at the bottom of the shirt, so it looks like it's tucked into your pants. <laughs> and there was one more. One more was some crappy band. Some crappy band. So I, think, really I think that was my favourite one. Yeah. 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 They reek of they reek of sarcasm. And um, so I, I mean, just going back to what you said about um, not compromising your style at all. I think that's the mark of a good, um, whether it's a production designer or a creative director. I, I think um, surely it's about bringing someone in that's kind of tailor made for that job already, and not and not. And not you know, embracing everything that they are about because you get the best results, right? Yeah. Did, I mean, did you did you enjoy? Would you love it working on the film? Yeah, I totally did. I think like the most important thing for them is like they knew what they wanted yeah. to achieve, and the, because they were like able to find that in me, it was like really rewarding. Mm. So that was the best part about it. So like all my and I got to it was a great portfolio piece for me as like part of my identity that I'm trying to form like right now, like early in my career. Yeah. So yeah, it was awesome. And then I got to see Ben Stiller on set one day. Yeah. And that was great. Did you speak to him? He told me he liked my shoes. <laughs> and his assistant liked my shoes. He was very like tan. Yeah. Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> it was very nice. Everyone was very pleasant. That's cool. And kind. So. Yeah. That's it's so cool because um, I've done little bits of work in film and production design in that direction, but I mean we're kind of real independent crappy budgets yeah I we're think way down the scale but it's it's just I, it, it seems to me that it's an, an industry maybe maybe more so than others in the arts and it is kind of a who you know industry in a, in a big way it's, yeah you I know. think like the guy I worked for Adam Stockhausen he's really great at like figuring out like who's the right person for the job and same thing with my um, last boss at WWE Dave Hilton they're I guess what makes a good creative leader is that you can figure out who's the right person for everything. Yeah. And then you have a better product because of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's how to really like, I guess that's later in your career when you can like bring people together. 
I think it certainly comes with experience. It's just, um, you know, I, I see things in my own work and in other people's work now within seconds that would have taken me, well, I, I just wouldn't have had the experience or the vision to see how that works or how that would fit in, in a wider world context. Whereas now it's, it's like, you know, I get, I look at things and ideas are just whizzing through my head straight away. It's like, oh, that make an awesome t-shirt or that would work in, in film. And, and I mean, I've been doing this seven years. So when you work under guys like Dave, who have been doing this for 30 years, it's like, it's such a blessing to kind of feed yeah, off Because now you have that experience of like, oh, this would be awesome if it was used this way. Yeah. And then like you see new things in people that they don't see in themselves and you're like, hey, have you ever considered like doing a project like this? And they're like, oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that, well that's the thing. I mean, is it, was there a specific piece at WWE that, that Adam Stockhausen saw? Oh, what was it? Um, actually, no, it wasn't WWE, it was my sketchbooks. He saw my personal sketchbooks, and I think that's what did it for him. He's like, great, these are it. it it's per nail on the head. It's like, I was always told, and I never under, I never kind of took it as gospel at university, but it, people said to me, the things you do for pleasure in your own time, your personal work, is the stuff that will actually generate the commissions. Uh, a lot of the time, I mean, not always as a rule, but, but it, that's the stuff that you do without inhibition, and that comes from there, mm -hmm. from the heart. Um, so I think people buy into that more because it just so, it's so you as a person and I think people connect with that. WWE too, I think like my creative director got me to do a lot of hand drawing when I was there too. He's like, yeah. oh great, like just do your style with this particular thing. So it was even more enjoyable because you make better work when it's enjoyable for you, I think. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. But when you're in, it's the same as any kind of learning or, or developing, if you're enjoying it, you're going to accelerate the process so much. Mm -hmm. So, one of the one of the things that um, made me laugh. I mean, I, I love when you post your drawings on social media, and it's particularly the weirdest stuff. And um, we were having a conversation about, you know, where does that fit in in your, you know, in the, in your, in the big, in the wider context, because you've got on one hand, you have to market to a, a commercial audience, so you have to put yourself in these shop windows. But then, on the other hand, you do this stuff like we said because you love it and it's quirky and it's you. But then, knowing and actually where that fits, yeah, within that is actually quite difficult, isn't it? It's like it's such a dichotomy. It's like too op. I mean, I guess it was the same struggle that I had at art school between being like this classically trained graphic designer and then wanting to do this like grungy nasty work that was kind of against those principles in ways yeah. i think you know they find themselves eventually but now it's like okay i can be this super clean designer and appeal to everybody but then like i still have this other thing yeah that makes me unique yeah completely it's so it's so stand out like it's hard to like integrate them together in one space yeah it's like I was saying to you before, you know, when I was checking out your website and things, knowing we were going to have this chat, and I, uh, I was gutted when I saw that like, the, the portraits and the, and, the, and the hand lettering was not there, and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> that's the stuff that I really love to see, and like, it makes me laugh every time. Like, there's, Kyla's got um, on, the, on the bedroom wall, what's, um, what's the one behind the desk? Uh, the, it felt right. It felt right. That's it, just it felt right. No, no context, it's like, is it, is it a landscape? Is it mountains? Yeah, it's a mountain landscape over water and a giant speech bubble filling the sky. <laughs> and it's just, it's just, it's there. That's for the viewer then. It's like the viewer takes ownership and you can just, imagination goes wild with what that could be, who could be saying that, what right. does it mean, you know? And it's it like, can, I mean, it can mean anything to anybody yeah. with your own experience that you bring to it. And I think that's the stuff, that's the truly successful kind of forms of art is when people connect themselves to it. And, it's, and it doesn't alienate a person, you know? Yeah. It's so insular that it kind of doubles back on itself and makes it actually, no, it's, it, anyone can fit, you know? With yeah, it. and I think when things are done in a way that are like, kind of like crude or like look like they're done quickly, everyone's like, oh yeah, I get it. Like, yeah, because they, they could have- That's me too. They could have potentially done it, but, but they didn't. And that's right. it, it's that whole thing about simplicity and it's, um, I think that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, think, I think the world needs to see more. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen, especially after this. I'll revamp my portfolio tonight. <laughs> so, okay, in, like inspiration-wise, you one of the best one of the best social media statuses I've ever seen is when you posted one saying, "I'm <laughs> I'm so into geriatric starlets right now," and it really made me laugh. And I, and I although I didn't quite understand what I, I kind of knew, and I think I knew, and then I I thought, okay. It's, 
going back, I watched um, Bill Cunningham New York film. For anyone that's not seen it, it's really worth checking out. Like Bill Cunningham's like I don't know how old he is now, but he's really quite old. And um, he's the New York Times every day double page spread of just interesting people in the yeah. street. It's an old guy that goes around on his bicycle with his camera and he just stops in the street if he sees someone that looks cool or interesting, photographs them and they just feel like a double page spread with people from the streets of New York. Yeah. And he's like, it's, there's a whole film about his life and he kind of lives in his studio and he used to live in Carnegie Hall. And there's a scene where there's about, I think there's only about five of them left and they're, really, they're trying to get them out of Carnegie Hall to convert to flats. Um, and he's like one of the last survivors. But all five of these like, like old designers, elderly designers, are just complete eccentrics. And when they're in there on the evenings, kind of together, it's just as soon as you said it, it was like that. I think like that's I want to be that. I can't yeah. wait to be that. So then I remember emailing you and saying, right, give me a list of who you're talking about because I'm really intrigued by this whole idea. And then the Iris Apple kind of jumps out, and I was like, I know, I know, I know the look. You can't get away from the look with the glasses and. So, I don't know, I'm going on, but tell me more. <laughs> I guess the thing I like about Iris is that, she, well, Bill Cunningham, first of all, is like the F. Scott Fitzgerald of like photographers. So yeah. like he, and I guess I've always been interested in interesting people as well, especially ones who are eccentric and older adults who don't let their age get in the way of like what they want to keep doing. And I guess that's what you'd want eventually. Um, Iris is great because she like defies what age is, but she's also like embraces it at the same time. Yeah. Which is, and I think like her advice is just like just stand up straight. Or like, it's like it's a really good advice. If you stand up straight, your back won't curve. Yeah. So like, there's that. <laughs> um, I think uh, what really got me into being fascinated by um, elderly women in particular was that I had these elderly aunts and they were just like these sassy Italian women that were like hard to deal with and you're like wow I hope I'm as sharp as that when I'm like 95 <laughs> like, of course you would want to be so I did a lot of creative writing in art school and I turned myself into an older woman and I was trying to believe what I would be like when I was like that age and I would write from that point of view that's brilliant so thinking that I was like still an artsy type I would probably like wear more wigs yeah and things to shape my bodice it's so <laughs> it's just, just she's intimidatingly cool like, I'm, it's quite a recent discovery for me and I watched a trailer for the new movie coming up biopic and um, she's just wonderful it's just like the um, I think she's got the largest collection of kind of like thrift store jewelry if I, maybe I'm she is a famous quite. artist though I think she got her start designing like the interiors I think yes. she did like presidential offices so she's savvy yeah she knows what's up for oh, sure oh absolutely yeah she's completely um, I mean that's you know, that's why she's famous isn't it mm -hmm. but she's just such an iconic look and, and it's funny because I, mean, I think the movie goes into like she's saying you know why would I want to buy all these new expensive things when there's all these amazing I think it's, apparently there's a scene in the film when she's like bartering down the guy and she's like, what can I say, I'm, I'm cheap. Yeah. <laughs> like a $3 bracelet or something and it's just like, wow, I love that. Hey, um, it's fine, I would do it too. And I think like it's good too, but I think a lot of like women in America, especially as they get older, they're like, oh, well, I guess this is it for me and there's no use in trying to be yeah. more than what I am now. It's like, oh, that, there's yeah. of course, there's so much, you've just cut your hair. Like I never understand. Yourself. I never understand that issue where it's like, right, that, that's it. It's you know, I know people who you know get past thirty, and it's almost like something visibly changes, and it's like, I think age is something to embrace, and, and certainly in you know in what we do in the arts, and I think it's. I think I fight that mentality a lot because like you deal with it all the time, especially with social media. You have everyone. I mean, it's really cliche to be like, oh, you have media telling you what to look like, and we have to like have a stance against this and it's like kind of annoying the people who have a stance against it it's like why don't you just not do it not do it and just do what you want to do yeah so I think when I like make my art or like make writings and stuff that's just like it's always very like anti everything and I want other people to get on board and be like oh you're just doing you right now I can yeah. do that also I think if you're always you at whatever stage in life you are and whatever you're feeling or whatever's driving you or pissing you off, then it's, that's, that's, why would you want to do the thing you were doing 20 years ago when you're not 20 years ago, you know? It's like, 
be now, be in that moment and, and do, you know, continue to push forward and explore new things creatively. Yeah, you can't keep reliving things. Like, no. even now, like, even, I like, I'm young, but, like, there are things that I made, I don't know, five, ten years ago, and I wish I could create that way again, but I know that I, I can't. Well, I, I could, but I can't mimic it. I could just take that and turn it into, like, something, like, I have to evolve it. Yeah, you do, like yeah. Your art changes whether you like it or not yeah. it just is going to happen <laughs> yeah completely yeah without a doubt and um, I, I was lucky enough to meet one of my heroes a couple of years ago and interviewed a guy called Ken Garland and he wrote um, he's a British graphic designer and I think Ken's in his mid 80s now and he's very much he's, he, you could imagine if you sat him and Harry Sapple in a room it's like get out it'd be incredible it'd be like a nuclear fallout of his personality and um, and Ken said like come round come and have a cup of tea and I was like what like this is a guy I studied in my dissertation so I went to London almost like the next day to go and interview him and um, he's he's so fired up he's still like kind of raging about you know whatever it is politically that he's working on he worked yeah. on like CND in the 60s and things like that and he's like, he was he wrote the first things first manifesto which was a bill that had um, creative people pledge free time to a better society it's not necessarily charity but you know he worked with educational toy manufacturers and, and it was just kind of get on board with something you care about and, and give a bit of your time towards it creatively. And um, he's just, you know, he was marching around the place, like almost shouting when he, when, he, when he was talking to me. And I was like, it's so inspiring to see a guy of that age or anyone of that age um, and just with that, that zest, you know? Well, they it's, carry, like, yeah, and that's like the cool, and I think that's why uh, you, it's great to look up to people who are still creative later in their life because, like, they've just kind of stuck with it. Like, course you'll probably have like things that happen throughout your life that like will bring you back or whatever but that's so fun to look up to people like that because they're way more inspiring yeah I was humbled yeah and when they care about what you're doing it's even more of like a push to like continue like gives you even more of a purpose you're like well yeah I think like I'm not going to worry about like where I'm going to be in 20 years it's like where are you going to be in like you could be doing really great things. If you don't concentrate like, on now, you not might be you might not be here in twenty years. You right, know? exactly. Like if you don't maximize what's right there now. Yeah, I mean, I hope that like I'm still making art and that I'm I live to like ninety and I. I really hope you. I really hope you do because I really want to see you as like in. My house will be so weird. <laughs> my room is already weird. I'll just get weirder. I'll be a hoarder. <laughs> You'd definitely be a hoarder, I think. <laughs> Just surrounded by like handwritten lettering that none of it. Yeah, I have all of my like <laughs> older friends. We'll have our little parties. I don't know what, what we do. We probably discuss our corsets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's so cool. And it's, do you think it's quite? Do you think it's something that's? Um, you know the whole like sort of age concern and cosmetic thing. Do you think? Do you think it's a big American thing? I mean, as as a Brit, I see maybe it's American television. All, all the, all I don't the know what it is. Media. I just never want to be an older woman who thinks it's okay to just like wear plain yeah. black clothing when you get to a certain age. Yeah. I guess like, I mean, you have what's available. Maybe people stop caring about like needing to, you know, be attractive for other people or things. Yeah. But like, why not just look good for yourself as much well, as... Well, surely it's got to be for you, yeah. It has to be for you. Like, yeah. if somebody is just like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to wear t-shirts and baggy jeans for the rest of my life. And, like, that's fine. Power to it. But, like, wouldn't it be me more interesting yeah, if you just, like, shook it up a little bit? Yeah. That's just my style. I mean, I always try to get my mom to wear something weird. <laughs> and she, like, she'll, she takes on the challenge sometimes. I'm like, hey... You should like wear a samurai belt today. <laughs> and she'll be like, that's a great idea. Get me one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she should take on like the Indian Italian thing. Oh, it's great. I think like my I have, like a yeah. Oh God, he was not, well. I think that's what it is. Like when you have an, an eccentric grandparent growing up, you're like, wow, that's like the coolest person I've ever seen. Yeah. And like even my grandmother, who was like more like traditional Italian, she always like was fond of like different colors and like big earrings and she had some weird jewelry yeah so like i'd be like hey grandma that's like quite the pattern top today she's like thank you <laughs> like that was awesome 
And then I would start wearing her shirts to school. I was just going to say, did you start to borrow? Yeah, my grandma got like, like a very old, you know, she re like she passed recently, um, but I still have all of her clothing. And my mom would get a little angry at me because she would just say like, why are you wearing grandma's clothes from the 80s when like you have nice clothes? <laughs> I was like, these clothes are great. Like there's some like really weird like buckle patterns on them. Yeah. It was great. And I would always get complimented. Everyone would be like, that's a great shirt. Where'd you get that? I'm like, it's my grandmother's. Or the worst was when I was with my mom and we would go shopping and a girl would be like, I have that same shirt. I love it. I was like, I bet you don't. This yeah, is my grandmother's. You got, the, you got the reprint. <laughs> but she did get a reprint. It was like the exact same pattern, except it was on like a purple like chiffon. And mine was like, yeah. hey, I still have it. And I still wear it. I am. Um, when we were out on Friday, um, the tie that I had, I'd shown I lost our grandmother recently too. And he was an eccentric as well. He was like from the Northeast in England. And they're just known for being kind of characters. Yeah. And, um, it was like suit every day, but always these kind of slightly rascal ties. And um, and the tie that I had on Friday was one that I found in my grandma's wardrobe with little rockets on it. And I was like, brilliant. Like, where's he got that from? Yeah, that was but, a good tie. Yeah. That was a really good tie. Yeah. And it, I just straight away was just like <laughs> back pocket and we were up there. And it, it's the same thing. It's like, why would you not wear those clothes? I mean, drop? that's fun. And then like everyone around you is having even more fun. I think we pretended that Sean was a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. everyone at the bar, I don't even know how it started. I think we were just like plotting it and someone overheard us and they were like, yeah. hey, like, are you famous? Is it okay if we like take a photo tonight? Sorry. And it worked. And it just spiraled, didn't it? It's like, so we were out. We've never done that before. We were, Kyla and I and my brother were out on, on Friday in, in uh, Williamsburg. And yeah, as Kyla said, we just kind of, as a joke, you know, because the, our shirts were so ridiculous and kind of. Sean's got this kind of British Northwest indie haircut. I like, think Oasis, think the Stone Roses. Um, so you know, people are looking. You just don't really, you don't really see it there, I guess, in New York. It's not a New York look. No. <laughs> and um, so people started to come up, and you could see people looking, kind of thinking, "Is he from a band?" Or what? And we just played into it anyway, and it, and it spiraled to the point where we're like, "Gotta get out. Cars are here. Like, and the cars here. We have to go now, Sean." <laughs> <laughs> but, but people were asking for five minutes to talk to him despite actually not knowing and who they he didn't is. want to talk to us they're like oh are you his people oh like can we just steal him we'll give him back and we're like we guess but like yeah. quick but <laughs> I guess that goes back to as funny as it is I guess that goes back to what we were saying about um, about the whole age thing with fashion and things or personal uh, style it's like, it can go so far it's like people just wanting to be associated despite not actually knowing if this guy's famous which is a frightening thing because it's like okay if you admire the guy and you, and you know his work and you know who he actually is then fine it's like you know I, I would love to talk to let's say Demon Albar one of my heroes and Blur but I'm not interested in talking to them because they might be or even if they are famous if I don't know who they are it just, I'm not interested it doesn't matter they're still, they're still a human being it's yeah like, exactly you know, like I'd love to, love to talk to Iris Apple because I'm just so intrigued having discovered this, this you know, 93-year-old, super talented but such it's an eccentric. interesting person. Yeah. But then it's just, and again, like with, with uh, the film with While We're Young, it's kind of, it is, it's that idea of just be comfortable where you are and, and, and go for it and enjoy it and, you know, getting in with this young hip couple and actually trying yeah, to do all these young things. Yeah, and even like things. that young hipster couple, it's like you don't even have to try to be a certain age, just kind of like... Do what you want to do. Yeah, it is about being like content where you are and like having to be content even like 10 years from now. Yeah. I think like going back to like my drawing, it's like I always feel like I'm this angsty 13 year old girl when I create work, but it's not so much. I think like something happens to you when you're a teen, you become like really aware of the life around you and the things that are wrong with it and the things that you want to be right with everything and you just kind of express that and like I think some people grow past that stage and then you know they do things that are more sophisticated mm. quote unquote but I think it's okay to like still approach everything in that mentality like what can be different yeah how can I be happier so yeah and it, it really does show in, in your creative output and that, I mean as a, as a whole but specifically your work it really it, the reason that I love your lettering and the, and the, and the, how quirky they are and the portraits you do and the, and the kind of like the gifts you've been doing recently, yeah. Kyle has been doing these sort of animated hand lettered gifts but with similar kind of messages to the uh, it felt right, and it's just that it's it screams that angsty the, the teenage thing you said I, I could have kind of 
identified that without even having you heard, you know, you explain it. And it's like, that's, I think, yeah, it, it has that the whole comfortable with where you are right now, but, but maintaining that yeah. aesthetic, it, it shows and it's, and it's, um, it endears it to people. And, it, for, and for that reason, it's, it's no surprise that, you know, that you were chosen for that film because it's just, it's, that's exactly what that thing was, what, what, what it was about, the movie. I think that's a fun theme about like, being as curious, being curious at that age, and that happens to be the exact same like age I based off my professional career with wrestling. Yeah. And then wrestling started like, I mean, it's people you know make fun of wrestling, but it's amazing that it can bring so many people, so many ages and cultures together yeah. to just like enjoy this one cool thing. Of course, it that is. That the yeah. world has. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same with isn't it? it's, it's the same with anything, isn't it? Whether it's Star Wars. Lord of the Rings, whatever that sort of geeky poison is, it's like it's that collective love of such love of something that's so kind of throwaway or, or nonsensical. But it's, yeah, there's always that one thing that can connect so many people. Yeah, if you em- if you embrace that, it's like we, 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 when we were out, out on Friday, we were talking about Ricky Gervais, and then um, when I interviewed Steve Merchant, who works with Ricky on you know wrote the co wrote the Office with him and co wrote extras. So, um, Steve, he was laughing about, you know, he, he can't stand that Lord of the Rings or anything like that. He, he can't sort of suspend his disbelief enough to enjoy it. But then he also has a slight envy when he when he drives past the Odeon and he sees like people camping out to go there. And he's like, what, you know, he's like, sad bastards, what are you all doing? But then he kind of also has this little envy of like, but actually they're with their mates, they're, they're in their element. And it's kind of, I want that for something, you know? It's yeah. just like, I think it's sad when people don't allow themselves to have that. Because people don't, you know, people, they get so caught up with social stigma and, and pressures to, to look cool or to look grown up. That yeah. I, th- I think that's one of the most tragic things when people can't just let go with their thing. It's sad to not have fun. I think I've done that. I think I've done that kind of recently in the past year. I, like, would isolate myself and just, like, make art. And then I re- realized that, like, no, I have to, like, go out and do the things that I like doing. And I'll have more fun and be around more people. And then at the end of the day, like generates more creativity for you too. You couldn't have put it better, yeah, it's, it's so true. You, have to, you just have to feed your imagination and your ideas, don't you? And yeah. How, how are you going to do that if you let yourself it's away? It's like and... field work. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. you have to go out and do it. I think like even at school my mom would be like, you shouldn't be partying on the weekends. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, I need these parties. Yeah. This is my material. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. All the cr- and you, you know, when you meet just like the experience of the night of pretending Sean was famous and, and you know it's just that's the stuff that triggers ideas and then and oh you, right yeah you, know. you could say one thing like one thing in dialogue and that could be like one of my art pieces later on and then everyone could get a kick out of it it's just like a simple prose yeah like that's why you have to be around people to kind of like I guess in my case I should just have to be around people more often yeah like make funnier stuff yeah that, that's just it. all my all, all the personal projects I've ever done that have actually resonated with anyone or brought results have been things that have come from in jokes or something I saw written on you know stupid things that, that I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't have put myself in, yeah. the, in these situations and gone out and had fun in some way I mean, no. being in the city is helpful in that way too because like even when you are sort of trying to isolate yourself or like be alone it's like you kind of can't because you have to go to work every day yeah you have to be shoved like in a sardine can with people on a subway car in the morning yeah like you're gonna hear something do you find new york inspiring as i say yeah i'm not the type of person to put on headphones and like block it all out i like prefer to just kind of like sit there and like listen to everything um of course you see sometimes you'll see things that just kind of like upset you or bother you and you just have to like let it exist and like carry on your day. But yeah, it's absolutely inspiring because like there's so many like alpha personalities who come here to live. So you're just constantly around people who are creative and like want to like, you know, be progressive. And then the New York City locals are just like, always a hoot they're just I love it I, I really I think I think I've fallen in love with this city more this time this is my second time and um, I've really kind of I was out with my camera yesterday and Sean and I were just kind of wandering around the upper west area just we haven't been there before and I was photographing all silly little things bits of graffiti things that I'm going to go away and illustrate that I, I find characterize the sort of streets in New York and it's something that I do in London too but the people I find it overwhelmingly exhausting like just the amount oh, of interesting just, people visually and, and socially and 
Yeah, you can fashion hunt all day, and you can find a lot of, like, good, like, old women who know what's up with their, like, fashion sense. Yeah. Like, there are some interesting outfits all the time. Yeah. Everybody, like, style in New York because, like, you kind of have to if you want to set yourself apart. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally. like, I'm going to wear this today, and I don't have to worry about who's going to see me because I'm just going to be on a train with everyone. So if I want to wear, like, giant culottes, yeah. <laughs> it won't bother me because there'll be one person who'll be like, yo, girl, like your pants. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It, actually, yeah. It's like, you know, when we were out on Friday and we both had kind of slightly over-the-top shirts on, it's like people, with so many people actually, you know, openly complimenting. And we, I think it's quite a British, there's a British reservation about London where not like, everyone you, does yeah. that. And I, mean, I don't know if it's a, a sort of, a national characteristic but I love that about New York and it's like I like the fact that I'm putting this shirt on that I really like and I don't care what anyone thinks yet you get people coming up and complimenting that and they're and like, like oh that's actually and then they're like I could do that I could wear a shirt like yeah, that yeah it does it feeds the next person's ideas to go out and do something like that and yeah and you learn that you just like can't make fun of anyone for what they're wearing it's like why would you like that's and yet it's like it's rude you just like they're having a blast and it's more kind of emba- it's more embarrassing that you, you're the one doing that you you're know? like oh my god look at that girl who's sitting down there it's just like dude yeah it's not your right to say that square she, like she's having a, she's having a, she looks great and she's having a good yeah. time so and the fact that you've noticed them is that not a, it's I, just I it's more it's, awkward because you're like why are you calling it out mm. Why can't you just like let it be? Yeah. I mean, I sit on the train. I just stare at everyone's shoes. It's fine. I just like like to wonder. I'm like, oh, that's what that's what they like. That's what they wear. Every yeah. Day. And why do they like it? Or you know, or what what's I get, made them choose that? You know, it's interesting. You get ideas too. I'm like, I could wear something like that tomorrow and feel pretty good about myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And then you see some interesting stuff, of course, on the subway. Some people are hardly wearing clothes, but <laughs> yeah. You can't even tell them to put a shirt on, and nobody does. Yeah, that's like, it. Okay, this guy exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Central Park the other day was interesting. You also never know, like, they could come back at you with, like, something. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Because I'm like, yo, put a shirt on. He'd be like, it'll give you, like, a whole philosophical reason why he's not wearing a shirt. Yeah. And you like, kind of wish you didn't have that conversation. <laughs> so easier to just go on your way play on your iphone <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's another thing as well that i find kind of a shame now it's like you see so many people walking around constantly with their head down on the phone not taking in my dad hates it every time he comes to the city he's like oh look at that guy doesn't know where he is he's like old school italian guy he's just like oh, another guy with his head down so he's like kyla next time you just walk straight and see if they move and like sometimes i do that because yeah. i like think Like, I'll just walk down the street, and, like, there's someone who's walking, like, somewhat, like, right directly in front of me, and they're not looking up, and I just keep walking, and then it takes them three inches before they're in front of me to be like, oh, oops, I'm sorry, because they're on their phone, and, like, New York is a busy street. People can just, like, I think I did it once, and somebody just, like, shoulder shoved me to get the point across, like, look where you're going, Yeah. and I, I was scared. Yeah, <laughs> and I never did it again. At least, yeah. I, I mean, I do it. I've got friends who do it on purpose. They love the opportunity to do that and wind yeah, up the I mean, person. Every, everyone's on their phones, but like you really can't look. At, I try not to be on my phone as much when I'm in transit. I try to only be on my phone when I have Wi-Fi. Yeah. So like, I can like look around the streets. Like sometimes when I'm like bummed out, I'm like, oh, I wish I could, you know, live in a quieter environment. I would just like put my phone away and like try to embrace New York in a nicer way by just like looking around and like walking through Times Square will definitely like make you feel like you're back in New York and just yeah. and when you're not on your phone. Yeah, it's like, um, just, I mean, I get that, you know, it's the way, it's the way especially myself as a freelance illustrator and, and designer, it's like, I, you know, I have to email clients, I have to find out, correspond with people, but I try and time that so that I'm, I'm soaking up the world around me, you know, it's like, I hate the idea that I could see something, um, just, a, you know, a poster on the wall or whatever it might be, or hear a conversation that will change the way I think about something or give me an idea for something that actually could really take my career in new places. And I might miss that yeah. because I'm texting someone or I'm, I'm refreshing Facebook, you know, it's, I hate that idea. And um, it's... Mm, each to their own, but I'm I'm kind of I'm, I'm in, I find it really important to just to see things and colours and hear sounds and smells and you know 
Yeah, I think the city is good for that. Hopefully, like, I think there are a lot of, like, creative people who aren't on their phone as much in New York, but, like, a city's so big, everyone's on their phone. Yeah. That's how people live. That's yeah. how people date. I know, yeah, it's... Uh... It's really crazy. But then even that, it's, uh, even that, there's so many project ideas that I get within that. Oh, yeah, of course. You I mean, know? you can't say, like, oh, you shouldn't be online dating. Like, that's messed up. Like, that's not real life. It's like, well, it is now. Yeah. It is. It is. So, like, either you, that's the way that you conduct yourself mm. or not. But either way, you can, like, transcend it and, like, make art about it if yeah. you desire to. I mean, I definitely do. Yeah, totally. A lot of my art is about <laughs> qualms of online dating. <laughs> I love to, you need to and that's fine and people like that of course they do yeah because it's personal and it's and it again it resonates yeah I'll have <laughs> friends who are like oh that's so good like I was in that I had that experience one time or like it's not even anything people love and I think when you make that that's one thing that like is kind of like people always seem to have like this issue with online dating because of like rejection or like not finding a relationship like people who are constantly online dating obviously aren't really finding anything yeah. so when you're like making you're like making commentary art or like writings about it more people are like yes like yeah. i understand and yeah. then, like you're creating this like group of like thinkers that want the same type of thing and have the same ideals and are getting you know, a sense of entertainment out of like the failures of what they're doing. Yeah. So then that's fine. Maybe you should create a platform or an app. Get Walker to design an app. <laughs> Kyle's got a friend called Walker for anyone who's listening who designs the codes and creates apps. But maybe you should create an app where people who've got frustrations with online dating illustrate or draw or write it down and, and pull it together in another network where then maybe they, you know, you'll piece together like, a piece yeah, of Yeah, you could have like, like <laughs> right swipe these pictures and then like you yeah. have a bunch of people like, oh, so-and-so like the same photo you did and then maybe you can talk about it. Yeah. It would be like a Tinder for and then you can communicate visual through, thinkers. Yeah, hand lettering, date and frustration, Tinder. Oh my God, it would be great. One could be so X-rated and then two people like it and they're like, yeah, we should go out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think want something there. I know. Don't, don't steal it. <laughs> That's brilliant. So, um, so you, are you working at HBO or no? I'm at HBO. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was working for a publishing company after WWE doing WWE magazines and some other projects, and then I was recruited to go to HBO to be part of their HBO Now project, which is an online streaming service similar to Netflix. So it's definitely more um, graphic design, like digital design, mm. and it's interesting. And I want it to get back into like digital work. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily like what I'm going to keep doing, but I am creating a lot of you know digital graphics that live in the digital world versus like tactile objects that are made you know through like printing processes so um it's fun and it's great and i get to watch a lot of tv and i get to know like all the cool shows that everyone's watching so it's like great in terms of like you know being relevant with culture but it's also really been helping me for my own work lately with like making animated gifts because i've just been like producing graphics for myself that live like in the digital world mm. and trying to like actually make that a medium for myself which it obviously still exists but like I've never done it yeah I've never been like a digital artist that's cool though isn't it because it, it, it you know even if uh, it's something that you you get into and you don't want to really do it anymore it, it kind of these things are often refresh the yeah other, the other and it's things, like HBO know? it's a cool company like the cafeteria is awesome I could, yeah I bet actually there are so many creative people like I, I am on the floor where there are a lot of producers so I'm constantly hearing people talk about like theatrical trailers and I get to know like the cool up and coming things so like it's exciting and it's nice to be around in that environment especially after working in film and like I think I even though I don't work like directly on shows or anything like that, I still gain the knowledge of what goes into it. Yeah. And that's an, and that's what I why I wanted to go to HBO in the first place. It's such a valuable process, isn't it? Yeah. 
to sort of get to see all these worlds, you know, whether it's through WWE and then move on to HBO and working on feature films. And it's, I think it's really important to kind of, like we said before, to gain that experience and insight as to where the things that you love doing can sit. You know, so it might be that it might be that you, you know the work you're doing now and then the, the drawings you do at home. It's like you know you, you'll see all the context for, for how they how they can function, and, and then in turn you'll be able to try and sell that into whatever it is you're working on and, and actually pitch that with with insight. You know? Yeah, I think like I think it's an unspoken goal of mine, but like to have my work like in pop culture is like the end goal yeah. at the end of the day. But I don't think like I am too like overly like ambitious to do it like oh I have to have everyone like see my stuff it's like it can happen over time if you just like yeah. integrate it in small ways totally I mean I mean you've already you, you know or if somebody just sees your work and then they do it because they're working at MTV and they're like oh I've seen somebody who does something like this let's try it on our end so yeah. like you don't I think especially in our culture now you can't say like I think I said like don't steal the app but like you could it's not so much about stealing ideas that it is about like sharing ideas. Like it's cool to see. Like I remember we were in a train station, or I was in a train station. I saw an advertisement that looked like your yeah, lettering, you and I said that, to you, yeah. "I'm like, this looks exactly like what you do, except not as good." But like, <laughs> it's so much your style, and it's like cool because you do see like ad agencies and creatives who like see the work of like these cool illustrators who are like let's do this yeah and that's awesome i yeah. feel like i take that as personal success if i know somebody who like does something like what i do yeah completely and like i it's i fine when i was on the plane and, and i was watching while we we're young and i and it, i managed to still pause it exactly on the avocado ice cream container and was like like sean's in the middle of a film and i'm just like <laughs> i'm whacking him on the shoulder and i was just like look Kyla did that Kyla did that and he's like all oh, right cool nice one. yeah it's just like but I, I, it's, it's, it is, it's a, it's a cool buzz, isn't it? You know, when you know that, that someone you know personally is actually doing something, because that, that's, that is pop culture. It's like, it's a, it's a really, it's a big, it's a hit film. It's a great film. It's a really good visual film. And it's so now it's, it's such a cool reference, accurate reference to, you know, hit culture right now. And, and you're a part of that. You've done the t-shirt designs, these lead characters. And that's yeah. the stuff a lot of people dream about doing one day and you've done it. And it's like, right now what? And I think like you said about putting the, not putting the pressure on yourself, it, it comes naturally. You find you find that path, and, and you develop over time. Yeah, I'm learning not to. I guess like being in New York, a lot of it's like, oh, how much money can I make now? Like, I need to have this income, and like, or whatever. And I think the best advice is from my dad, and he always says, like, you know, you can't worry. He's like, the money will come, the money will come. He's like, but like, he's like, more importantly, is like your success will always like draw attention. Yes. To what you're doing. So, the more like quietly you find your success the more people are like oh yeah. awesome that's why I think self-promotion is okay because you're telling people like this is what I've been doing and then yeah. one person will see it and they'll say like great you're hired for this job or like I want you yeah. to like come here and that's happened for you too you know well that's it I mean right you know, I, I was I think we said the other night was aggressively aloof when we were talking about you know how Sean should behave as a fake celebrity and yeah. <laughs> but it's like I, was, I said I said to somebody recently I was aggressively modest when I brought my book out because I almost felt guilty having brought this book out that's autobiographical and it's not an autobiography because no one really outside a few illustration students know who I am which is that's fine by me I don't, I don't care but it was, it, the only way I could tell that story was autobiographically because it's a deeply personal journey yeah. Um, facing all the rejection and everything that comes with it that everyone goes yeah, through but everyone deals with it in their own way so I thought okay the reason no one's referencing this stuff in writing is because you can't write it in textbook form but what if I write this dark humour balls out honesty kind of type account of, of actually that stuff that we are, we're all familiar with as creatives and it's you know it seems to have connected with the right people which is a huge buzz and at the same time, it's like, you know... But it's I, funny I, how you're so modest about it because, like, it is a cool project and you can just be like, I did this. Yeah. But, like, you don't... You're, you're not that way. But it's funny because, like, yeah. you could if you wanted to. I could, yeah. But <laughs> I think um, it's interesting because it's, it's started already to bring opportunities to go and talk at these cool events now. Like, I'm talking at London Design Week in a, in a few weeks. Um, it's late September. I'm having a discussion panel basically about I forget it's really bad, I forgot what the topic is. But that's awesome. I was just like, Well design week, that's all I need to know. I'm like really over the moon about that. And um, you know, it's kind of sometimes it's you stop and think and go, 
shit, that's you know, that, that's that's cool. I should be proud of that. But then I think maybe it's, it's a blessing and a curse that I'm always kind of excited about the next thing and the ne- and the next thing. And it's like sometimes I don't. I need to stop and just actually enjoy and go. No, you like suck that up. Don't don't be embarrassed. Why should you be embarrassed? Be no. proud, you know. And, uh, but I think modesty is uh, maybe it's an inherently British quality. I don't know. I don't think I'm embarrassed. I don't like to like have the spotlight on me whatsoever. Yeah. Ev- ever, you know. I mean. It's not like you're kind of like, yeah, I did that work, great. Yeah. I don't need everyone to know. <laughs> but then your work talks for itself. That's the great thing about visual culture is that um, I, I, think, uh, I think it's good sometimes to keep the mystique and let the, let the work tell the story. And yeah. If it's so you, then you don't actually need to put you out there any more than that, that shop front, you know? All right, like maybe what? one day I'll have like a gallery show of like my creative yeah, work, yeah. but like gallery shows are funny because everyone's like oh I want to see the work and I want to see the artist yeah and like usually the artist that's when like the artist is like okay you can see me now <laughs> have an unveiling or in my mind like every time I go to shows it's like okay like where is so and so like let me go up and like say congratulations and like yeah. you know they're waiting for it yeah yeah. But sometimes yeah. some people are like oh thank you thank you yeah 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 and they're super modest and like sweet about their work and there are some people who are like yes Come to my show. <laughs> I, lo- I kind of love both. I love both people. Reasons. I love everything in between, yeah. Yeah. Some people are just like off in the corner, just like drinking by themselves, and you're like, hey, this is your show, right? Yeah. You're like, yes, it is. Hope you like it. Thanks. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, love, I love both extremes in that, in that sense. <laughs> oh, God. Right, so um, there's one regular bit at the end that I always ask people. Um, I call it the shark in the tank section. I'm sick of explaining why I call it that, so I'm just not going to bother anymore. But um, it's basically I just ask someone to name like a, a, their favorite, not not the favorite, but like a piece of creative work. Whether it could be a book, it could be a song, it could be a, an idea, absolutely anything that kind of drives you or inspires you or is a favorite. It could be at this moment, it could be a favorite thing of all time. Just something that kind of thrills you and, and inspires you to go out there and create. Um, that's really hard. <laughs> right now. Yeah, right now, I've been reading Tom Robbins. He's been my main inspiration for everything I've been doing. He's a really great, yeah. great American novelist. And he started out um, as an art critic, I believe, but I've been reading a lot of his work because he has like this really colorful sense of language, and he's older. And he's like an older man, but he's like, I feel like he's like this perpetual like 30-year-old dude yeah. Every time I read him, like, I just, and then I find out, like, what year he was born. I'm like, holy crap, like, this motherfucker is getting old, but, like. When was he born? He was know? born in 19, in the 1930s, I think. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Wow. Um, but his work is still so, like, relevant and great, so. Do you think you found a connection with the whole, you know, the kind of teenage angst thing that you described in your work? With him, I don't know. I think he just has, like, this approach to life. He, like, uses so many, like, beautiful, like, metaphors that are just so, like, um, offbeat and weird. Like, he'll be like, oh, he'll be talking about a character from, like, like this old New Yorker guy who he says his, like, accent is as heavy, his Bronx accent is as heavy as a subway car. And it's, like, that type of, like, visual that that he creates. And, like, you totally understand who that person is who has, like, that thick Bronx accent. And it's, like, yes, that's it. So I think right now he's been my main inspiration. Otherwise, I think it's, I think I owe a lot to, like, skateboard culture. Yeah? Yeah, and just, like, the energy of what skateboarding culture is that's so interesting because um the first on the v- first episode of this podcast that one of my close friends and back home uh, you should check out his work called danny danny allison and um he grew up in blackpool just that tiny little place called cleveland it's just outside blackpool and he was a really good skater and about to turn pro and he blew his knee out really bad and that was when he kind of discovered design and, and went away from skateboarding but he's he still loves you know all the, the visual culture within skateboarding and that was what led him into design the photography the kind of subversive advertising that you get in in, totally. the, in the skating world and that that collective sense of belonging so i find that really interesting you know that they, that you guys completely different parts of the world and, and backgrounds yet yeah, i love that but yeah, that's so cool i think that's why skateboarding is awesome because like it does i don't i mean i never really skateboarded i just had friends and i think skateboarding opened me up to this world of like 
going to punk shows, going to metal shows, going to these like squatter houses where kids were making zines and like weird puppet wow. shows. So yeah. like, I think all of that, because it has that like youthful energy of like, let's constantly experiment, that's always been really, really present in my work. And like, I've always wanted to like stay true to that. So like when you see a like, when you start reading somebody who like has that in their like, voice in their writing you're like yes this is great this mm. is everything that i want to be yeah so <laughs> yeah tom robbins awesome brilliant well i think that's uh touched on everything there thank you <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome thanks for your time. where can people check out your work uh you can go to my website it's um www.kylopalucci.com how do you spell palucci palucci well my name is spelled k-y-l-a P A O L U C C I, and then I also have an Instagram account of all of my um, recently hand drawn letters, which is Chalucci, C I A O L U C C I. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, lengthy time, Kyla. Thank you. It was cool. <laughs> that story, uh, that story about Kyla drawing all over her body, hit me for six, and I, I for one, would love to see. Um, their mum's face when that revelation happened in the doctor's surgery um, it just goes to show well, I think we've all got those stories about kind of creative rebellion, rebellion as young kids uh, what a story like I say check out her Instagram it's fant- fantastically laid out um, at Ciao Lucci as Kyla said uh, kylapaulucci.com her website uh, keep an eye on what she's up to because I, I'm constantly encouraging Kyla to, to do more drawing and do more of her crazy stuff but her design work is absolutely amazing too and uh, I can see big things on the horizon for Kyla uh, if she continues to channel that personality into her work. Uh, go and support her, check out her stuff, let her know your thoughts. I'm sure everyone wants to hear feedback on their work. And we're looking forward to hearing more from you guys on the Twitter at Arrest All Mimics. Uh, go and check out illustrationweb.com. Brand new website over there. Uh, lots of new work. Always new talent on the agency and a whole new news section now uh, where you can also find this podcast as well as the usual channels. Uh, if you like the show and you're a regular listener, please go and check out the subscription on iTunes. Um, I will post a link for that on on the shows from now on so you know where to go. Uh, listen on SoundCloud so you can download from there too. And I hope you're still enjoying it. Uh, get back to us guys and look forward to bringing you some more content soon.